What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can strip away these sections of silence in any audio track with a couple clicks of the mouse, so let's get right to it. So for this example, I'm using a piano sample. That way we can actually see the silence and how Cubase intuitively removes the silence with a couple clicks. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to click the audio track that we want to strip away the silence from. So in this case, it's this piano track. And then I'm going to go to audio and then go to where it says advance and then detect silence. You're going to get prompted with this window and this is where the magic happens. You just have to understand what these parameters do. This can also be used to take away breaths from vocal parts or any guitar squeaks from guitar recordings. So let's go ahead and just see what all of this means. So the open threshold is going to be what's going to be heard after you strip away the silence. And the closed threshold is going to be the part that you're stripping away. And you're going to see that there is a linked button here. Now, generally, you're going to probably use this linked you probably won't have it unlinked but what this means is that as you move one the other one is going to move with it and of course if i open the gate so notice how the open is above these waveforms it's not going to cut anything out but if i start to close this you're going to start to see these highlighted regions appear this means that anything past anything outside of these lines is what's going to be heard and anything inside these lines is what's going to be stripped away so if i would hit process then you're only going to see two chunks which are these two chunks that are highlighted here so let's just see it just for an example see how now we have only two chunks so i'm going to go ahead and undo this and go back to advance and detect silence now you kind of get the idea of what this is doing and here it'll tell you that there are two sections detected that fall under this threshold. If we go even lower, we start to catch more of the waveforms. So essentially what you want to do is make sure that you're zoomed in so you can clearly see the waveform that you want to make sure that you keep and not strip away. So the idea is that you're going to dial in a threshold where you can catch all of your words or all of your guitar chords and remove all of the unnecessary stuff. Now, if I zoom out and show you what it looks like unlinked, So now we're going to see a green and a red rectangle. So here is the green one. And if we scroll all the way to the right, we're going to see a red one. So essentially what you just did was we're separating the open and the closed threshold. So anything again within the lines of the green is going to be heard. And anything within the lines of the red is going to be cut out. It's the same premise, except now you have independent control of the open and the closed threshold. And again, for most people's workflow, the linked one will work just fine. You just have to fine tune it to make sure that you grab all of your words and make sure you don't grab any of those breaths or silence parts that you want to remove. So the next thing we're going to look at is the minimum time open. So this works like a gate. Essentially, you could choose how many milliseconds before the gate opens up again, and you could choose whatever parameter you like. This would have to be experimental. So notice how if I lower the time open, it's going to catch the peaks outside of this, but it's going to close pretty soon. If we delay how long it's going to stay open, then we're going to catch more of the sound within these peaks. Same thing with the minimum time closed. And if we look at the time closed, if we lower the number, you're going to see that the regions get tighter. So we get a more precise cut within the regions. And if we raise the number, you're going to see that it opens up and allows more of the sound to come in. So this is yet another way to really dial in the amount of silence that you want to take away from this. And then we also have something called pre and post roll. So what pre and post roll is, is essentially a buffer time. So let's say you want to dial in this specific wave. So I'm going to go ahead and just dial in so that I can only capture that one wave. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so that you can see this more clearly. And let's say there is a syllable or two that you need to catch right before the entrance of this. Well, this is what pre and post roll will do. 
So let's say you want to catch a note or a word that happens right before the actual transient jumps up here. We use pre-roll. So if we do a 30 millisecond delay, that means you're going to capture 30 milliseconds before the actual transient appears. If we lower it, you're going to see that it's going to get much tighter to the transient. If we raise it, you're going to see it's going to get much more farther away, therefore allowing any kind of pronunciation to come in. Or let's say your guitar, you like a, a certain squeak noise or some overtones. And you want to keep that in there. You could do that with the pre-roll. Same thing with the post-roll. Let's say we don't want this little bit in here. We can lower the millisecond and it's going to make it a lot tighter. Of course, it didn't catch it all. But if we go ahead and raise it, then you're going to see it's going to catch more of that. And so notice how when I went to zero, there's still a little bit of a peak left in here. What I can do is I can mess around with the minimum time open and I can lower this. That way I can cut out that little peak. But let's say I just want to get right at the edge, like right there at a thousand milliseconds. It gets it just perfectly there. Now I can hit process. So let's go ahead and zoom this out. I'm only going to get this region here and I can hit process and then I'm only going to get that chunk. So let me undo again and go right back in so I can show you this last little bit here. So there's another section to the right here. So there's a couple more settings here that we can check out. It's the auto setting here. So if you have this auto setting on, it's going to be a little bit more taxing on your CPU because as you start moving this, notice how the lines move and then the audio waveform here adapts to whatever you're doing. If I take off auto and I start to move things, you're going to see that it's not adapting until I hit compute and then it starts to adapt. This is a good way to save some CPU in case your computer is not powerful enough to be able to do the auto sync so that you have that option there. You can also do add as regions. So if I go ahead and click this and then let's say I want this to be in a separate region it's going to be called piano and then it's going to auto number this by one, two, three, or you could change the number however you want to do it. And if I hit process, watch what happens. Now this region is called piano one. If I had more sections in there, I can auto name it into different things. Again, it's just going to go up sequentially here. So if I lower this and have more regions up here, let me just lower this so I can have more sections in here. And now I hit process. Now you're going to see I have three regions and it auto named it piano one, piano two and piano three. So that's a great and easy way to remove silence inside of your audio tracks. That way you don't have to go in manually and chop them up, even though some people do prefer to go in there and really get detailed in stripping away silence and leaving things that they like. This is just a very easy way to kind of clean it up really quick. And then you have sort of an easier or a baseline to start with instead of chopping it up from the beginning. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and leave your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. There's a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.